Okay, let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard of Hickory Golf? Well, if you try to imagine what golf would have been like about 100 years ago, that's basically Hickory Golf. And it turns out there's a bit of a revival of this sport going on right now. So for this next story, we headed to St. Andrews, Scotland, which is, of course, holy ground for golfers, to discover that going back to older equipment doesn't mean giving up your competitive edge. St. Andrews, Scotland. This is the home of golf. We know golf's been played for about 600 years in St. Andrews. In that time, golf equipment has seen a lot of change. But while many brands dabble in materials like graphite and carbon fiber, this local club maker is sticking with wood. Hamish Steedman runs a very unique workshop, St. Andrews Golf Company. It's the only traditional golf club maker left on earth. And surprisingly, the only club maker at all left in Scotland. We're very conscious that we are the last club maker in Scotland and uh, very passionate about keeping that, uh, that history alive. The company's roots trace back to 1881, but some of their clubs, like this long-nosed spoon, go back even further. This club would have been used from the start of golf, effectively. True to tradition, the clubs around here begin as a block of wood. With the long nose clubs, there's really a, a sort of beech wood that they used, uh, which was a softer wood. The putter heads we manufacture, that's a maple wood. With the rough shapes cut out, the smaller chunks go into a special lathe. Tracing a stainless steel master copy, the lathe whittles the wooden heads down to exact dimensions. Every club is made to play, so accuracy is everything. Just as important as shape, is weight. Molten lead is used to bring each head up to spec. Every head is weighed and meets the tolerance level. Soon, the club head is ready to meet the shaft. For this, the team still uses hickory wood. One of the reasons they used hickory was because it was quite a straight grain and it was quite a strong club that, that had, had uh, a good flex. Even the best materials rely on skilled craftsmen to put them together. Around here, that's taken very seriously. A new club maker to come into the business, it would probably take him a couple of years to, to be left alone to actually craft a club from start to finish. They are artisans, there's no doubt about that. The performance of every club rests in the hands of its maker, especially when it comes to flex. I still maintain the, the shaft as the engine of the club. Uh, it's important to get that shaft right. Every club is sanded down by hand, and to me it's the, the club maker's feel when he's got the club in his hand and whipping it around. You can thin the shaft down and it, it makes it a bit whippier, or vice versa, you can leave it stiffer. Just like the steel shafts, the better players will probably prefer a, a stiffer shaft, and if you're not so strong, you need a wee bit more help. Although the materials have changed, when it came to hitting a ball in the olden days, the same physics still apply. Modern clubs, with their oversized sweet spots, are a lot more forgiving. And golf balls have gotten a lot more springy and aerodynamic over the centuries. But according to Hamish, club performance hasn't actually improved all that much. That was a theory we had to see to believe. Stepping into the company's golf simulator room, it's time to do some good old Daily Planet style testing. But what we're going to do today is a bit of fun. And we're going to compare the three different uh, golf clubs from the modern club going right back to your long nose from the 1880 period. Just to compare the distances and performance and see just how similar these clubs really are. So I've got Grant here who's going to be my specialist club hitter. Let's start with the modern clubs. So this is your your driver with the 460cc head. That was a great shot, Grant, straight up the middle, 278 yards. So now we move on to our Brassy, which is a 1920s club. Another great strike, 269 yards. And now we move back to our long nose club from the 1880 period. So let's see how we get on with this one.
weekend, three great strikes in a row, 262 yards with their long nose from the 1880s. And it's interesting to see that there's really very little difference with the three different clubs, which really does show that it's the golf ball that's dictating the distance, it's not really the golf club. As the leather grip winds into place, one more club is ready for the links. A beautiful and functional piece of art. After 130 years in the business, the team at St. Andrews Golf Company is definitely keeping the ancient history of golf alive. But no matter what version you play or what clubs you use, some things in this sport will always be true. And once the ball is out there, it comes down to getting it in the hole as few shots as possible. Nothing in the game of golf has changed over the years from that point of view.